Okay, so today we are going to be um, using some oxidation remover, fixing or correcting that oxidation. Then we're going to be uh, polishing, waxing, and uh, getting the shine back on this RV. Uh, it is it has needed that for a long time, ever since we bought it. Uh, you know, the paint or the gel coat was just fading really, really bad. Um, and I think the, the idea of today's video is to kind of show you that you can bring back some of the luster, some of the shine to that gel coat uh, on a budget. Um, we're here in Blue Ridge looking for uh, property to buy, so we need all of our money <laughs> tucked away for that. So what we're going to be doing here is like under under $100 definitely. Um, I'll get you the exact pricing for the stuff that I used, but under $100 definitely. I mean, you can spend up to $1,000 to have these things professionally washed and waxed. We're not gonna spend that kind of money. Uh, we're just gonna get it looking nice again. I'll also say that I got uh, some advice for some, from some car guys, some guys that do uh, boat and RV detailing. Um, they kind of laughed at what I was doing because they're the professionals and you know, they want me to use the, the expensive buffing machines, the expensive pads, the expensive materials. They want me to go to ceramic uh, coating this thing. I'm just not willing to spend that kind of money on it. Um, and I realize that they're professionals and I realize they probably have a way better way of doing this. It's probably more efficient, faster, uh, but it's going to be more expensive. And like I said, I'm just, I'm not willing to step into that financial arena. Um, so what we're doing is just going to be on a budget and it's just to kind of show you that you can do it too pretty darn cheap. Okay, so last week you may remember that I was talking about all the uh, fading and oxidation that's going on with our RV. And so I ordered uh, this from Amazon yesterday and it showed up, showed up this morning. Uh, but these are buffer pads for our handheld drill. Um, I didn't handheld, all drills are handheld for my cordless drill. Um, I didn't want to go buy a specialized tool just for buffing, uh, so I figured getting something to use uh, that I could put right on the drill would work. Uh, and this was this was like $8.99 for different grit uh, buffing pads. So um, let's see how this works. All right, let's open this bad boy up and see what we got. So it's got all these different buffer pads. I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly what they all do, uh, but the important thing is that it's got this uh, uh, metal dowel that will go into the jaws on the drill. Let's try it out. All right, so is this gonna be as comfortable as holding a uh, purpose-built buffer where it's really close? I, no, but this'll work. I mean, well, I say it'll work. Let's see, we got, we got 42 feet of fifth wheel to buff out, so we'll try it. So the other part of the puzzle is I got the, the buffing pads but then uh, I also needed uh, Meguiar's M49 uh, oxidation remover. And that is a little bit more difficult to find, but I did find it at O'Reilly's Auto Parts. They actually didn't have it here, but they were able to overnight some from Atlanta. Um, so I'm going to pick that up right now. So I also need uh, soap and a wax. So that's what I'm looking for now and then I'll pick up the special order up front. All right, so here's what I ended up with. I kind of just went with Meguiar's everything. It seemed to be pretty highly rated. So I got uh, Carnuba wax, car wash soap, and then this M49 oxidation remover. This seems to be uh, what everyone kind of recommends. Uh, and then some uh, microfiber towels because isn't that like the professional thing to do i don't know so fun fact about uh, o'reilly auto parts um uh i used to live right next to the o'reilly's growing up uh in good old springfield missouri and uh their 
one of their original accountants at the at the Springfield store was uh, was one of my babysitters. <laughs> All right, so before we can get to any of the uh, fiberglass restoration, uh, we need to wash and rinse off the roof because it got stained up by a bunch of leaves that fell on it while we were uh, we had it parked at my parents. So let's get that taken care of. I already got the uh, truck brush up here get the rest of this up here and get to work. Look at all that. It is nasty up here. So we'll get this cleaned up really quick. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, so the roof is going really well. That's not what I'm after, but the difference is pretty incredible. You wanna see something amazing? Okay, look at that difference. I mean, I'm not gonna say that it's because of the soap. I mean, it was just really filthy, but that is a stark difference. That looks good. All right, just the last little bit of roof, and then I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of my Saturday, make some dinner, and uh, call it a day. All right, that went smooth enough. So tomorrow we can get started with the, uh, the buffing. Also, another reason I'm glad uh, that I came up here and did this is because, you know, you get to see the, the roof in a clean condition, it kind of exposes everything like this. See that crack right there? One that I'm making talk right now? Well, that is a sure sign of water intrusion. So uh, tomorrow I'll get up here and uh, seal that up as well. So one thing I decided to do that I I, it was after I stopped filming, but I wanted to mention it is I just cleaned off the awnings so that when we roll them in, we're not just dumping nasty, dirty water back on them. All right, so today is the day. We're gonna tackle uh, the oxidation on the back of this RV and get it polished up real nice. Um, I did cheat a little bit. I did cheat just to test out all the stuff. I did um, go ahead and shine up this side and it ended up looking really nice. Uh, there are a lot of swirl marks and I'm using kind of, uh, I'm not using the greatest equipment, but you know what, I'm, I'm okay with that. I just, <laughs> I need to get some shine back on this RV. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so first things first, let's get this thing washed and then we will start with the oxidation remover after that. Um, I am standing in the back of the pickup because I don't carry a ladder around with me like I probably should, but uh, I'll make it work. So when it's, when it's wet, it looks nice and shiny, and uh, that's kind of what I'm trying to get back to. We'll, we'll see how it works. Uh, what I did on the other side makes it look promising, so we'll see. All right, while that's drying, I'll show you what we've got here. Just, it's a buffer pad with hook and loop on it, and put on the buffer pad. I mean, this, this is essentially just goes on like a wax. Uh, it's an oxidation remover, which is exactly what we've got going on. Um, but just put a little dab on there and start getting it.
Yeah, so this stuff really isn't much different than, uh, than any normal automotive wax uh, in, in how it's applied. Uh, so you just wanna work in small sections and, until you get the whole thing done. And then after that, you can move on to uh, waxing. I think you can see it, but there is where I've already buffed with the first grip pad, and there is not. You can already see the difference. Same here, where this was uh, the gel coat that was still protected, and this is where I buffed, and then I left this space so you could see some of the contrast. Uh, basically, I'm not there yet, but it's definitely getting closer. All right, quick break, because I had to put on some pants, because it is windy and freezing out here. Uh, I say freezing, it's probably like in the 50s. So, it's looking a lot better. Uh, I have noticed some, well, a lot of swirling. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. But, it's still looking better. So, time to go down to, or go up to a higher grit a buffing pad or cutting pad or whatever they call it. Uh, I'm not gonna bore you with the footage of that because it's gonna look a lot the same. So I'll catch up with you in about 30 minutes. Okay, so there's the finished product. You can kind of see behind the ladder where the original gel coat was still intact. Maybe a little bit of difference there, but overall, what an improvement. If you kind of put it in the sun a little bit, you can see some of the swirling. Um, I'm gonna say not that big of a deal, uh, at least for an amateur job. And I think that's the idea here. You know, we're, we're just removing a lot of the bad, bad oxidation um, and getting some of that shine back. You can pay a lot of money uh, to, to go back to that original gel coat. You can pay professionals a lot of money to make it look nice. But I'd say for uh, $40 in uh, materials, or $40 in supplies and then, uh, you know, nine bucks for the buffing pads. This is a pretty damn good job. So I got the buffing pads, uh, the buffing pad kit from Amazon. Um, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just uh, throw the link in the description. Um, but basically I chose uh, one of the less expensive kits because I just didn't know how well it worked. It ended up working out pretty decent. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and just recommend you get this one. They have kits with more pieces if, if you're going to do more, but I think this kit will last me the entire, uh, 42 foot fifth wheel. So it's got all kinds of parts and pieces and it's got the mandrill. It's got, uh, you know, the, the lamb skin or sheepskin buffing pad and all the other fine grit buffing pads you'll need. Uh, so the only other thing you'll need is the M49, some wax, uh, and some soap for for washing But all in all it turned out to be a pretty good deal. Okay, so we got the the rear of the RV nice and shiny It's looking really good actually, uh, but what I wanted to do now was just can kind of give you a side-by-side -side comparison of uh, how this looks once I've 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 uh, put the oxidation remover on and done some of the buffing. So what I'm going to do is over here I'm going to do a full oxidation remover layer. I'm going to do uh, several different layers of grit buffing. Right here I'm going to do oxidation remover uh, with uh, just one grit of buffing just to see if I'm wasting my time with the other uh, 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 more coarse grits. And then over here I'm just going to leave it plain so you can see the difference. This is a really good spot because we've got tree branch scratches all along. I'll, I'll take you up close so you can see. Um, and lots and lots of full sun, years of full sun that has kind of removed the uh, shine from that gel coat. I don't know if, I think the camera can see it, but you can see that scratch all along here that goes through. Uh, that is what we're trying to remove as well as kind of polish this up and bring back the shine. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to see some pretty stark contrast between the different sections. Before I get started on this, it's important to note that the instructions for the oxidation remover, and I think automotive wax in general, says to apply in a cool shaded area. This is neither uh, shaded nor cool. It's actually hot to the touch just from the full sun. Um, but I think that the full sun is kind of going to give you a better picture on camera as to how effective this is. So. 
I'm not sure how that affects the, uh, the performance of these products, but let's try it out. Oh, and the last thing is I've already washed this, so that's already taken care of. I just didn't want to bore you with that step. Okay, so we can already kind of see how effective this is. Uh, you can see that large scratch. Let's see, I think you can see, you can see that large scratch right there. And you can see how dull the uh, reflection of the sun is. Um, and then we move over in this section. Uh, the shine is greater, the scratch is reduced. Um, and then over here, the scratch is still there a little bit much more reduced and the glare is much brighter. I think even the exposure on the camera is changing. So you can see the uh, the difference in what's going on. Now over here I have done absolutely nothing. This is just four and a half years of full sun. This is uh, just buffing with the um, with the medium grit to see what it does. Uh, you might be able to see there's lots of swirling uh, that's not good. And then over here, still some swirling, uh, but again, for the price, uh, I'm going to call that not bad at all. I'm actually really happy with this. So I don't know what exactly the difference is going to be, but let's take this off and just take a look. Oh, uh, of course. Well, it doesn't matter. We can still take a look. Let's see what it did. I mean, that, that is a dramatic difference. So, uh, medium grit polish only. Uh, three different sets, uh, three different levels of grit. And then absolutely nothing behind the tape. And you can see those scratch marks there where they are greatly reduced over here. Man, you can see the difference in the shade too. Absolutely nothing to uh, to medium grid only. What a difference. Well, there you have it. There is uh, removing oxidation and wax, polishing and waxing a gel coat RV uh, on a budget. I'm gonna go ahead and say that I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, it's looking awesome. It's looking way better than when we bought it. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Hey, if you guys have any suggestions or a way for me to do this better, now, nah, easy now, easy now. This, again, this was not a professional job. This was just kind of how to do it on a budget. But if you have any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I'd really appreciate it. Go ahead and, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, maybe subscribe and share. That'd be awesome. Hey, see you down the road, guys.